Good morning. Do you like your new perspective? We've, we've shifted things over just a little bit. Uh, of course, it's uh, you know, temperature's getting a little warmer and everything, and so uh, we kind of shifted things back. You are free to move your chair. If you enjoy sitting in the sun and, and it warms you up and cheers you up and everything, you feel free to, to move around and uh, find the spot that, that's good for you. On this Mother's Day, what a blessing it is to gather and worship the Lord together. And uh, we wish all the mothers here uh, a very happy Mother's Day. In fact, our service today is going to give scriptural encouragement about the role of mother and wife and Christian woman, too. And our, our sermon message uh, will do that as well. So we'll follow the uh, order of service as printed out. The opening song, Borning Cry, is on pages 12 and 13 in the back of the bulletin. We'd also like to welcome our online viewers today as well. The bulletin was posted on our church website. You can find it there if that's helpful as you worship with us today. We'll begin with the first song. on page three with the opening responses. We're using the service of morning praise. <coughs> oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us worship Him.
turn to our scripture readings this morning on Mother's Day. And first of all, we read the section from Proverbs 31, the wife of noble character. The wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today is from 2 Timothy chapter 1. We hear little snippets about mothers and grandmothers and godly women uh, in the Bible. And uh, here we hear about Timothy, the New Testament believer's uh, mother and grandmother as well who influenced him. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. This also is the word of the Lord.
Would you please stand out of respect for the reading from the Gospels today? Our Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Here we see an example of a godly woman, especially in prayer in the New Testament. The surprising thing is she was a Gentile woman who brought her request to Jesus. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that very hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please be seated now as we'll sing him 502. That's on page 14 in the back of the folder. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. In the name of our Lord, who has established the positions in the home, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Where do girls today learn to be women? Think about that for a moment. Where do girls learn to be women? Where have the young girls that are related to you learned to be women? I think today on Mother's Day, we, we probably would first of all recognize their own mother. They, they have seen the example of their mother 
And many of them, at least when they were very young age, copy their mannerisms, copy the things that they say, and emulate their, their own mothers. That can tend to change as, as they get older because there are other influences also out there that also teach them what it is to be a woman. What are things outside the home that teach our young girls how to be women? After all, we have a number of girls in our Sunday school and uh, in our congregation. What do they see out there in the world? Uh, a lot of voices, actually. Some of it's going to come in TV shows, sitcoms, movies, talk shows, their friends, school teachers, magazines, news clips, and of course for any girl, well even long before she gets a smartphone, she's going to know all about um, Snapchat stories, Reddit, Medium, and TikTok. And if you're not familiar with all of those, you are not informed on what is teaching girls how to be women today. Like it or not, there are many, many influences, but there's still one more influence out there that will tell us what it is to be a godly woman, wife, and mother. And that's the scriptures also as well. And today we're going to look at one of those verses in our first reading from Proverbs chapter 31. And we're going to look at that and we're going to see what makes a godly woman, wife, and mother and we're going to pray for Christian mothers today that they would emulate those characteristics of Scripture that tell us what this is like. As we begin, we begin with a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The verse from Proverbs 31 that we're going to look at is verse 30, which said, Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. First of all today, uh, maybe a word to women among us and, and women out there. What makes a godly woman, wife, and mother? This is a very interesting verse. It has some very interesting words in it. Charm. Charm. Uh, that's a Hebrew word that it, it means sympathy. It means reaching out with feeling. It can mean pity. It means favor. It can even mean grace. And it's a word that's usually used in a positive sense in the Bible. For example, with Abraham in the Old Testament, it says he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's the word. God reached out to him with his grace and favor and, and pity and mercy. But the word can also have a negative meaning as well sometimes. It depends on context. Uh, it can describe a man who is seduced by a woman as she flatters him and reaches out to him. So what's the meaning here? Well, it says here that charm is deceptive. Literally, that's the word for lying. We, we could almost translate that charm lies. So this, this is the negative sense of the word. Uh, what does this, this mean? Have you seen this in action? There, there definitely is a, is a warning here. And maybe this is the flattery that, that you maybe observe when a young woman is really putting on her charms to a young man. Maybe so much so that it's a bit deceitful as to who she is or, or what's inside here. Maybe you look at that, maybe you know her pretty well and you're saying, watch out young man, watch out. Charm is deceptive. Or perhaps you might uh, have known a, a young woman or two in your life who has this ability to kind of turn people on other people and kind of manipulates things out there so that she can kind of elevate herself in the process at school or, or in the group. Charm is deceptive. And this, this is not what makes a godly woman, wife, or mother. And then we have that second phrase. Beauty is fleeting. Now, there's nothing strange about that word beauty. It simply means a pleasing outward appearance, an appearance that is attractive. Sarah in the Old Testament and Rachel are spoken of as being pretty and beautiful. 
But what do we hear about beauty? Beauty is fleeting. It is fleeting. Literally, it's a breath, a vapor. How long is vapor around? You know, I think during the past year, we've probably heard more discussions on vapor and breath and how long that sticks around. <laughs> well, beauty is like that. It is around, but it's like a cold day. I don't know if you've ever come out in the morning where it's cold and your breath, you can see your breath. How, how long is that breath there when you, when you see it? Well, I know if you're, if you're way up in Canada, it's, it's going to be around a little while. But even then, it just kind of disappears and vaporizes. This is what beauty is like. How sad if a woman's worth was going to be linked to her beauty. If that was going to be the deepest part of her. Because we all know how maybe those, those crow lines begin to come. But we know that those those laugh lines, or maybe they're worry lines, also begin to show themselves. And that hair is going to probably turn gray one of those days. And, and the body isn't quite going to be what it was in its youth. And there's all ways to combat that. We have lotions and ointments and diets and exercise and all, all kinds of things. And it's, it's not bad to pursue those. But you know it's a losing battle. It's a losing battle because beauty is fleeting. Who is to be praised? A woman who fears the Lord. A woman who fears the Lord. What does that mean? Well, in Proverbs 9, we hear the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. What type of woman is this? A woman who fears the Lord and has knowledge of the Holy One. This is one who knows inside of her that she has a date. And it is a date that is more important than any one that she's been on in her life. It's a date with Christ on the last day. Christ, her judge, and Christ, her Savior. And therefore, that is going to shape every single part of her life. It's going to shape, first of all, her view of her sin and her shortcomings and her faults. Psalm 51 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. This is a woman who knows her faults and shortcomings very well. And this is one who grieves over her sin. She's not a person who says, yeah, we're all sinners. Yeah, we've all fallen short. But she profoundly knows how she has fallen short before Christ her judge. And yet it is also one who knows about the one who came for that sin. It's the one who says, along with the Virgin Mary, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just like Mary rejoiced in her Savior, the one that she even bore, this woman knows Jesus, the one who came to this earth for her. She knows very well that one who came as her Savior to bear her sins, to take them away, to live a perfect life for her as her substitute, to fulfill all things necessary for her salvation, and she rejoices in this forgiveness and grace and God's favor that he extended every day of her life. That's this woman. And therefore, this is going to show itself in a number of ways. It's going to show itself in her congregation. She is going to be one who worships the Lord regularly, sings his praise, learns from his word, fellowships with God's people. This is one who receives the Lord's Supper on a regular basis. This is someone who is constant in prayer, eager to study the scriptures, one who use, give, uses gifts to serve in her church and befriend others. This is one who is an inspiration to her congregation. And it'll show itself even more. This is someone that will have that show in her personal life. She will have a devotion book or her Bible that is not far from her on her nightstand or on her end table. This is one who will know the truths of scripture that, that we can learn for a lifetime. This is one who will also pray at home. This is one whom you look at, and her language is not like the language of the world, but rather noble language. She is modest in her dress. She is wise in her use of her personal time. 
and she serves those who are around her who are not even in her congregation, but just her neighbors and friends. She prays for them. These things exhibit themselves in every relationship she has. And if she is blessed to be a wife and a mother in her own home, they will exude toward those people who are in her household. She will love and support her husband. She will love and care for and provide for her children. She will pray for them all regularly. She is a Proverbs 31 woman. We could spend the whole time that we have today going through some of those characteristics in that whole chapter that we read where she is one who is shrewd, she is one who is loving, she is one who is a businesswoman and a provider, and one who loves her family. And what about her beauty? Well, here in the New Testament, 1 Peter says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. You know, it's my experience that after women hear about the godly wife and woman and mother, there can be some guilt that comes out. But what a good time that is to flee back to the cross and not to feel pushed down, but rather to feel inspired because of their Savior and to know there are new starts and forgiveness again as God gives them. What about the rest of us? This sermon isn't just for the females here among us today. What about the rest of us? After all, we're all children. We all have a mother, don't we? And if we think about that, what about the men who are among us. What about those who are young boys or young men, those who are single? How, how is this important to you? Well, if you're a boy here today, maybe you've thought about having a family someday. Maybe you've dreamed, maybe I could marry someone someday. Maybe I could have some children today if God blesses me in that way. Well, th these are important words. Whom will you seek to be a wife in your life? Will you only look at the charm and the flattery? Or will you only look at the beauty and the outward appearance that everybody else seems to be looking at? Or will you look deeper? Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. How wise that is of a boy and a young man to contemplate what truly makes a woman beautiful in God's eyes and to know the scriptures about a godly woman, wife, and mother, and to pray fervently that God would bless them one day, if he chooses, with such a woman in their own life. What about those among us who are married? Will we value the wife of noble character? Will we cultivate in her these traits that she is exhibiting? Will we lead the family spiritually in our own homes? Or will we do a lot of harping? Harping on her because maybe that beauty isn't quite what it used to be. Or maybe because there were some faults or shortcomings that did come out during the week. Will we beat them down or build them up? It does say here that a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Maybe this is a good day, husbands, for us to say, how, how often does that praise come out of our mouths? Will you praise her? Or, or will you not give so much praise because after all, you're the strong, silent type? Or will you not tell her you love her so much because, well, she should know? Or will you ignore her because you are self-absorbed in all the things that you have to do in your life and with your job? Are you more moody than you are praise-giving? And would she consider herself to be more the maid than the beloved partner and wife and godly woman of the household. Oh, there are some things for which we need to confess to, to our Lord and receive his forgiveness as well when it comes to how we see and treat the woman of noble character. And what if you're a child? And once again, we, we all have a mother, don't we? 
some who are here today while you're still in your homes, others, maybe you're, you're all grown up and you're not with your mother every day anymore. If you're still in your home, will you respect and love and obey your mother? Or will you be tempted to ignore and only ridicule your mother? You know, sometimes you see a, a gathering of young people or maybe even children, maybe a school event or maybe a little concert or maybe some social gathering. Maybe not so much nowadays, but they're coming back. And as you look out there, you might see, boy, that young man who's in that new shirt and he is so gracious and so put together, and he's so confident. But you know, at home, things might very well be different. Maybe the only time he opens his mouth at home to his mother is to yell at her, talk to her about what she should be doing and tell her that he's not her slave. How about those young ladies who are out there? Those, those young girls, so cute looking young girls, so bright and singing or talking or doing whatever they're doing at this gathering, put together. But you know, those eyes can be daggers when they look at their mother. And that relationship between daughter and mother can be kind of painful and a bit ugly many days. What an encouragement this is for children in the home who are still under their parents' influence to treat them with respect and love, for they are to be praised. And what if you are a grown child? What if you're no longer in your own childhood home? Will you continue to respect your mother? Care for your mother? Repay your mother? Visit and call your mother? Make sure that their needs are taken care of, even in their old age when things aren't quite what they used to be. I think on a day like today, it's a wonderful day for us to take stock of how we have treated and viewed our, our mothers and the godly women of this world and to ask the Lord's forgiveness for times that we have fallen short, knowing that there is forgiveness and new starts because of our Savior Jesus. So finally, on this Mother's Day, we, we could think of many women of, of the world who have many characteristics, so being a go-getter, being a talented leader, being, being well-spoken, and, and all these things that people look for today. What a blessing it is when all those gifts and talents are combined with the things that we hear today in this little small verse. What a blessing it is when Scripture and faith are attached to all those talents that God gives. So thank God for godly women, wives, and mothers, not just on Mother's Day, but year-round. And may we all remember that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Would you please rise as we respond with a song on pages 8 to 9, We Praise You, O God.
thank offerings today. Uh, we have a plate here at the right side of the canopy for you if you'd like to leave an offering at our worship service today. Therefore, we'll continue on the top of the next page, page 10, with a response and then with prayers. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Mother's Day, we thank you for all the Christian mothers the world over. We realize that they are a great force in the world against sin and evil. They, through the Christian training of their children, are a mighty power for good on this earth today. Help them always realize that the importance of their mission and the greatness of their responsibility lies in their home. By their God-fearing example, cause them to turn their children to you and help mothers to see that the days in which we live are indeed evil and that the time is short so that they may work hard and pray hard to bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Fill them with a love for all children so that like Hannah, the understanding of the scriptures that Priscilla had, the concern for the religious care of children that filled Lois's heart, the mother of Timothy, the faith in God that Moses' mother had, and the deeds of love and kindness which filled Dorcas's life might be theirs. Make them realize that their work of child training and soul saving is of an eternal nature, blessing them with faith, patience, and love that they need for their tasks. Also fill us all with a deep sense of love for our own dear mothers, as we remember how they risked their lives to bring us into this world, and of the self-denial and self-sacrifice that they underwent on our behalf. Forgive us if in our concern with the many passing things of this life, we have failed to show proper love and kindness to them. Help us to make each day of our lives a real Mother's Day for our parents by living upright Christian lives. And if our parents are still with us, help us to honor and serve them, even in their old age. If they are in heaven, keep us in the true faith until our end, so that we may have a glorious family reunion with them in paradise. Hear us, O gracious Father, as we also pray in Jesus' name. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated as our service closes with the hymn on page 15.
Good morning again, and uh, wonderful to worship with you here on Mother's Day. To all the mothers uh, out there, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day, and uh, may God bless you. As far as our schedule this morning, uh, there's coffee and individually packed treats and, and things inside. So uh, come on inside for a cup of coffee, uh, hang around and have some conversation. In about uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so, we'll, we'll start Family Bible Hour with a Bible study inside and also Sunday School on our playground patio. So join us for that. Um, our Bible study today, we're going to show just this brief, uh, there's a song that's kind of neat on Mother's Day uh, to watch about uh, motherhood and, and things for just a few minutes. So we'll begin our Bible study with that. Please, uh, if you have a mailbox inside, go pick up your Scented Magazine for May, which has arrived and which was distributed. That'll save us the, the cost of uh, mailing it out, which we're doing during these times that we're a bit uh, disconnected and enjoy all the great articles that are, are in there. Also, uh, it was not in the bulletin, uh, our oversight that Spry, Spry has its gathering this Saturday at five o'clock, I believe, Saturday at five o'clock. So uh, if you're 50 and over, come in and enjoy that time together and the meal. And finally, well, also, there's some announcements in the bulletin to, to be aware of. I need you to repeat after me. Nine o'clock. Can you say that? Nine o'clock. One more time. Nine, Nine o'clock. Guess what's happening next week? Church service. With our temperatures going up, we've moved everyone kind of in the shade and kind of reconfigured here because uh, I know some like to be in the sun and, and really, uh, you know, enjoy the warmth and everything. Uh, but the temperatures are going up and everything, and so we are going to move our church service to nine o'clock starting next week. And it's gonna stay that way for, for a long time, of course then. And if you want the latest on uh, you know inside, outside, or whatever, and our thoughts and what's coming up, read the front page of the church newsletter. There was an article on that with our, our worship plan. Any other announcements we should know? Otherwise, God bless your Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you. 